Welcome back to the Rice and Slice Golf Show Podcast. My name is Theo. Gentlemen, by the side of me, as always, is Chenji Meng. Episode 53, what is going on? That was probably one of the best intros I've ever done. It, I'm not going to lie. Definitely 100 times better than last week. That's for sure. What I wonder think? why that is, because I did the intro. No, you did the intro two episodes ago. I did it. And then I tried I to did... do it at the Ryder Cup. You did, yes, but that's because I failed. Miserably. Although to be fair, like what you just did was wonderful. That was actually pretty hot. It was. It was like pre- that was kind of rolled off the tongue quite hot. well. Like you it were, was, it was pretty you were hot. steaming. <laughs> like you were like, yeah, you're right. Yeah, and bearing right. in mind, it's literally eleven thirty-one p.m. right now. <laughs> it is. It's quite late. It's Monday, 9th of October for us. For you, it's Wednesday, the. 11th of October, if you're listening on the Wednesday. If not, it's completely fine. As long as you're listening, we're happy. Uh, welcome back, guys. Please like and subscribe. Please follow us on TikTok and uh, uh, Instagram at Razor Slice Podcast. Do all that good stuff. Um, leave a comment. Send us a DM. Any sponsorships, we're willing, we're open to uh, to accept any sponsorships. We, we're, we're, we're very cheap. We're very easy to manipulate. I am. Chenji's not. But... <laughs> You know, I'll take a dozen balls for a spot for a shout out. You know, it is what it is. So I'm easy. But Chenji wants a dozen Pro V1 Xs. Uh, He's very meticulous left, about you know, left what dash. Left dash. I haven't, yeah, left dash. I haven't played in. Uh, you know what, right? Dude, I haven't played in a Pro V1 in way over a year. No way. Way is over that right? a year. No, way over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I've been playing with my Kirkland V2s, mate, and uh, they're doing well for Dude. me. And I don't want to change. All I'm playing with is Pro V1s these days because that's all the balls that I keep well, on course, finding. No, no, no. I don't, I've never... Mate, to this date, I have yet to buy a single box of Pro V1s to this date. That's not true. I don't, I don't believe that for a second. 100%. I, I have never... no way that's I have true. I've never... No way. Okay. You know, the, uh, I did buy like two sleeves of the Ryder Cup Pro V1s, but they're not for playing anyway. They're like commemorative, right? But I've never oh, in my know. life bought either a sleeve or a box of Pro V1s or Pro V1Xs or AVXs or whatsoever. Would you? I wish I could say the would same. Would you believe that? Would you believe that? No, no, I don't yes, believe it. Yes, it's but true. If you say you do, you know, I trust you. I, I, I believe, I, you know, if you say you did, then that's But fine. in fact, in my bag right now, I've got like a box of like 24 pristine Pro V1s. Like, I've just got this bad habit of collecting them, right? Don't I like, you know, I just... Well, no, it's not a bad habit. You just kind of find them and then you put them in your bag. That's very normal. Yeah, yeah well, yeah, exactly. But with me, right? Okay, th- this is how I work. I was a 26 handicapper about two years ago, or just over a year ago. And I would go out and buy Pro V1s and Pro V1X and Pro V1 Left Dash. Like, that's all I would use. I'm like, oh, I'd need a Pro V1. You don't need a Pro V1. They are £45 a dozen. Wait. That was, a, and you, that was two years ago. That's when a, we first started. Have you seen how expensive yeah. they are now? They're like 50 pounds. See, I, I don't even know. That's what I mean. It's been that long. I'm, I'm not even interested. Now that I'm a better player than what I used to be, um, I'm, I still wouldn't use a Pro V1. And, I, and I'm like, you're only going to use, you're, you're only going to lose that Pro V1 anyway. So I said to myself, when I'm single digit handicap, that's when I go to a Pro V1. Because I feel like I'm, I'm going to, hopefully, I'm going to be losing less balls, right? Yeah. But even when I'm playing golf and I find a Pro V1, I have this thing where I, I want my board to be like kind of brand new. Even though I use cheap Kirkland balls, the second it has like a mark on or like a visible mark, a little bit deep, that ball is getting sh- tossed into the bushes. No way. And then I'm going to get a You're new joking. Ball. Is that yeah. what you do now? No. Like, yeah. Your, your but, Kirk- yeah, but that, it, it gets so to my head. So literally, it will last you like two holes, three holes for a ball. Uh, no, not not that much. It'll probably last me. Well, saying that, I'm either gonna throw it away because it's scuffed, or I'm gonna lose it, and it doesn't last like more than five holes anyway. Either no way. way, that's so crazy. It's just, it's just one of those things. Yeah, but, um, but even if I find even even if I'm in the bushes and I find like a Pro V1 or a tight list, I'm gonna give it away to whoever I'm playing with. I'm not interested. I don't want to use Pro V1. I don't want to use. I, I don't. I just want my ball. I want my new ball, the one that I paid for. The one that I know how it's going to work-ish in a way. And that's it. So if we're playing together, I th- I'm sure last time we played at Moore Park, or it could have been Jack. No, it was with you. I would like find a ball and I'm like, oh, here you go, mate. Have three tightlist Pro V1s or a TP5 or whatever. I'm just not interested. I don't want those little muddy balls that I have to go be going that little machine and just clean them and just kind of fully go out at it. And just like, I'm just not interested. I'd, I'd rather just give them away. I'm not, I'm, I'm not bothered. Nice, posh boy. 
the the guy, our mutual friend, and the guy that introduced us, that put us together, and now we have this great love relationship. We also share a podcast, and you know, we share many holidays, many I don't know, many things together. Um, steak, we said we shared steak, a big a lot of steak last night. <laughs> Can't believe uh, that was together. last night, actually. <laughs> it was. If it, it feels a long, it feels a lot longer than last night. Um, yeah, our mutual friend George Macbeth. Shout out to you, George. I don't think he's listening, but if you are, shout out hey, to yo. you. Um, his dad has a hobby of he does. I don't know. I don't even know if he plays golf. No, he doesn't. He doesn't. His dad has a hobby. He of, doesn't. He walks around golf courses and just goes in the bushes and just finds golf balls. He's got thousands of golf golf balls and he's like because he's, he's got like this, buckets. This man is retired, like proper buckets. Yeah. He go, he, yeah, yeah. He goes around and he finds golf balls and then he goes in his garage. He sits down. He like sorts them all out. He cleans them and then George would like come around to my house or, 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 or you know whatever. I'm just kind of like, what balls do you want? And I'm like, oh, I'll take a, I'll take a bag of Proby ones. And he's come with like a little carrier bag of Proby ones. I'm like, yeah, so he kind of does that. The other thing he sells them are like, you know, garage sales or whatever you call them. Uh, car boot sales, car boot. It's, it's kind of a good, it's but kind of a just, good exercise though, isn't it? It's like, you know, you, it is, you walk around, you yeah. bend down, you jump up, you go left, you go right. You know, it's good yeah. exercise. And it's a bit of like, it's kind of, you just keep in the it's mind. Like a bit uh, of a, it's like dude. a bit of a scavenger hunt. It is. Have you ever used that UV light torch? No. We've st- I mean, if you're one of the oh if you're one God. of the early listeners, you would know that like this is like you 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 have no idea how mature you sound right now, Theo. Like literally, when we first mature, yeah, yeah, yeah we, about your balls, <laughs> mature about your balls. Yeah, like <laughs> <laughs> wait, what do you mean? No, but like what you know, you like mean? early on when we like when we first started playing golf, you know, as, as we said, and we yeah. talked about this, like you, know, you would just exclusively buy privy ones, like. Literally, that's true. you know, I'd find you obviously like, you know, two minutes before the tea time. That's when I arrive. And then, you know, you've arrived an hour before. <laughs> and um, not only yeah. have you practiced, you know, like what, 100 balls at the range, you know, 20 putts at the putting I'm, green. I'm already sweating and tired. He's like I'm sweating and tired. <laughs> and then man stops fresh at the pro shop. Ask the guy, you know, man's got cash in the pockets, 100 pounds and buys two boxes of proofy ones. Yeah. Like that's the usual Sunday that I know. Like that's the usual silly, silly, silly Sunday, boy. Uh, Theo Sunday it consists of an hour of warm up and two boxes mm-hmm. of privy ones left ashes. Yeah, those days are, are long gone. The warm up still still exists. I'm I'm still there an hour early, putting, chipping, doing whatever I can do to kind of warm up a little bit. I ha- I do have my little routine, um, but no, I'm not buying. I'm not even going into. I always I love I mate. I don't know what it is. I think every person listening and every golfer in the world, you get that feeling of when you walk into a pro shop and you just, you want to look around and want to see if there's anything new. And, you know, if this, dude, I don't know what it is about. I get so happy when I walk into a pro shop. I want to see the ball markers. I have a, I don't know if you can see in the camera. I have, I'm not even going to attempt to get them out, dude, because um, I'm, yeah, the, the, the belly hanging on. I have a, dude. Nope, I still, oh, I'm still. Okay. They, they went. I'm still. <laughs> I've got, I've still got like this, a souvenir. I've still like got this for you, mate. No, wrong one. That went yes, worse. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, I just ran over my dog. Sorry, Tiger. I didn't see you there, mate. Oh, I just, I just hit him a Oops. little bit. Sorry, sorry Tiger. Tiger. You're all right, mate. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, mate. But yeah, I've got a bunch of um, where is it? Pitchforks that I always collect whenever I go to like new, um, like places or whatever as a little souvenir. And this, actually, this. Chenji gave it to me. Chenji got it for me. And this was not cheap. Unless you stole it. Did you steal it? Why would I steal it? Okay. So this was not cheap. Chenji paid for it. <laughs> uh, speaking of this tiger, uh, what is it? <laughs> tiger. Uh, pitchfork. I think it's a good segment to get into. How bloody expensive the rider cut was. <laughs> Chenji's face changed. Oh my god! Right, for anybody that doesn't know, the rider cut was last week. <laughs> if you were living under a rock, yeah. So last week we were at the rider cup in Italy. Chenji still like gobsmacked. Look, look, look at the little stanky face that he's putting on right now. Last week it was a rider cup. Obviously, Europe dominated and absolutely smashed the USA. Sorry to all the USA uh, listeners. It was coming. You know, it wasn't a surprise. It is what it is. Um, we went, we were lucky enough to get tickets. We went, there was a group of six of us. We went from like the Saturday morning. We had a great, great, great time. Last week's episode was actually recorded at the Ryder Cup venue in Italy. Um, and we were talking about how great the day was. The great, the, the, the day was amazing. The whole holiday vacation, the weekend was incredible. 
But I've got not beef. I don't have beef, but I was just amazed of how expensive the food, the drink, and the merch tent were actually was at the Ryder Cup venue. The reason why I'm so surprised is because we've been lucky enough to go to other events, right? Mm. We've been to the Open a couple of times. We've been to, you've been to Wentworth, BMW Championship. You know, we, we've been lucky enough to go around and kind of have a decent experience. And we, we always go into the merch shop. We always buy um, like clothing or souvenirs for friends or family or whatever, right? Hats, whatever, towels. Considering how cheap Rome was compared to how expensive the right, like Marco Simeone, um, like merch stuff was. What are you looking for in your phone? Yeah, go on. <laughs> I thought you were trying to find yeah, something. I'm... Yeah, so he, he was just, he was night and day. So we would go to a restaurant in, in Rome and a bowl of pasta. And keep in mind, this is like a generous portion of pasta. It would be like seven euros. A fresh wood oven baked pizza would be six euros. We went, me and Jack, Chenji wasn't with us at the time, for breakfast. We had two massive croissants with like white chocolate in it, two coffees, and the total was four euros 50. Four euros 50, equivalent of like what, four pounds 10, would not even get you a coffee at your local Starbucks in England. And we had two croissants and two coffees for that same price in, in Rome. And then we go from that to going to the Ryder Cup where a chicken burger and fries was 26 euros. A bottle of water was four euros. A simple one pound night, what, what, like a one pound uh, um, soft ice cream in the UK. Eight it was euros. Eight euros. Eight euros for us. Eight euros for a simple, like not even like a simple like soft serve, but like ice cream, a magnum, like a Mr. Whippy no, like ice a, cream. a magnum, like a magnum. No, a magnum was was luxury, mate. A mag this was a soft serve, like one of the machines. Eight euros. Um, we, me and Jack, were in the front of the queue to like run to go to the to the first tee, right? And we, um, because we were in the front, and we we're like, oh, yeah, there's not that many people behind us. Jack, you stay here. You hold, um, you know, the, our place in the queue. I'm gonna go to the food court. And I'm going to get us some like breakfast because we're going to be here a while, right? I go, I got a one breakfast wrap. To be fair, I'm not going to lie to you. It was probably the best breakfast wrap I've ever had in my life. But that that doesn't make it okay. One breakfast wrap and a tiny coffee. It was 18 euros. What is going on, guys? I understand we're like at a venue. I understand it's an event. I understand all that. But we've never been to a golf venue or even a concert or a gig or anywhere where things are that expensive. Dio, I'll tell you what, like, obviously, like, while we were there, I was full on complaining, right? Like, I can't believe in comparison how expensive yeah. things were. Like, literally on the Saturday, we were out all day, you know, at the pubs, right? We went to, you know, we were just drinking and drinking and drinking and eating pizzas and drinking, right? Yeah. And like, you know, the cost of a pint of beer was like, what, four euros, five euros at tops? It was um, nothing. It was and so then, cheap. And you know, food, obviously like, you know, in a restaurant, brilliant stuff. I had a truffle pasta for like 16 euros. And then literally, Mad. And like the following- Sorry. I gone. Tr truffle pasta. It was literally covered in truffle. Yeah, exactly. Covered in truffles. Like you couldn't like see pasta. pasta covered, covered in truffle for like 16 euros, yeah? And then the following it was, it was day- crazy. We're at a venue getting served like food in like a plastic, like what's it called? Like a little paper, like what do you even call it? Like a little paper bag. Like a grease proof like a grease -proof paper. paper yeah. yeah. And then like the bill comes yeah. out and it's like 16 euros for like a sandwich. Yeah, it was, it was silly yeah. expensive. But, it was like being in Monaco. I thought, I actually then th th thought about it and I realized actually, yeah. in American terms, this is actually reasonable. You know, do you think so? Absolutely. Like, because the thing is, like, obviously, we're so used to like the UK prices and like European prices, right? But, you know, I lived in the US for many years, right? And I just realized, you know, back in the days, and that was like already like what, five, six years ago, you go to like an average baseball game, average NBA game, right? Like, right. the cost of like a hot dog is like $12. Like, literally. No, there's no. Yeah, way. seriously. And, uh, you know, a beer is like, $11, $12 for like a smaller pint Dude. than there is. And that was like five, six years ago, right? Like think about now, That's crazy. COVID's happened, inflation, all this and all that. 
And I remember actually somebody saying actually the US Open for tennis. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like the famous, there's a famous cocktail that they make at the US Open, like the tennis open, uh, which is called the Honey Deuce. And one okay. drink there is $23 plus, plus tax and tips. So basically, dude, listen to me. It's like twenty-eight dollars if you wanted to have one cocktail at the venue served in like a plastic cup. Okay, so are people? So this is a serious question, yeah. If we go and watch um, a sporting event, well, okay, this is this is a bad example because in the UK you're not allowed to have drinks at sporting events while watching, sport, apart from golf, obviously. And, rug and rugby and event. cricket, literally everything apart from football. Oh, yeah, and cricket. Oh, yeah, <laughs> Only right, football, actually. like every okay. other sport you can Perfect drink. Perfect example. This is very niche, right? But let's say go, you go to a cricket game, which is which is the equivalent of going to a baseball game in the US, yeah. right? A cricket game in, in England or anywhere in the world, it, it they literally play for days. But let's say one, one day of cricket goes on for like six, seven hours. Am I correct? Yeah, easily. Do you know? I yeah. think so. So what people do... What people do is a day out for them, especially if the day is nice and the weather's good. They go out and all they do is they drink from the second they go there to the second they leave. And they have a great time. They're cheering for the team. They're drinking with their friends. They're eating. Walk, walk, they're, they're welcome having to a great British time. culture. Like just drink, find, finding like a sports a event out. and they're just drinking all day. Yeah. It's the greatest day out. Best right? part is you even but get then, to bring your own alcohol. Yeah. Like up. Yeah. Yeah. So with that. When you go to an event like that, you're not expecting to pay twelve pounds for a pint no, of beer. No, no, like correct? you're paying exactly top prices. Look, maybe like a pound extra, Pop, okay, yeah, and e people accept it. Exactly, I agree. So, y U.S. Open and the price of a of a cocktail. How much did you say? Twenty eight euro, twenty eight dollars, like twenty three dollars. Basically, it all comes down to like I don't know, probably thirty dollars if you just want to like you know. Okay, so let's say so. Are people you should know this, Genji? Are people going to like the U.S. Open or like a baseball game? And sitting there and with their friends and literally just drinking and drinking and drinking from the time they get there until the time they leave? Or is it, oh, we're just going to have one drink and then we might drink before or we might drink after? Like, how does it work? Look, I have I lived in the US when I was a student, right? I didn't have any money. Like, when I go to a sporting event, I'd have one drink for the experience, maybe one hot dog, and then I'm yeah. skinned, right? Yeah. Like, Dude, that, that's like when, $60. And yeah. You've but when nothing. you're there, like, you know, and you make loads of money maybe you just like all right it's just the cost of having fun i understand but what's the average person doing is the average american going no, to a baseball chug, game or like a tennis chugging game beers i mean do you, do, do you know what, what was weird right i don't know if you've noticed this when we we're on the tip first tee at the Ryder cup in front of me two seats in front of me it was the um, i can't remember the name guardians of the yeah, cup yeah the guardians of the cup so that was like like fit twenty people dressed up in like European gear, um, and they were like following Team Europe. And then on the left of them, on the first row again, it was the it was the American versions of whatever, and they were dressing like American outfits or whatever. Dude, they've been well. What I haven't spoken to them, I probably should have, but I've noticed I've noticed this, and you kind of figure it all out. They've must have been to so many Ryder Cups in the past years that they know the ins and outs and what to do and what not to do. Somehow, by the way, where we were, there was no seating arrangement. It was like first come, first served. Somehow, all those people had seats already like booked off and you can't book off seats there. I don't, I don't know how that worked. The second thing that really, really amazed me, dude, people were turning up with coolers with full, like one cooler with full of sandwiches, another cooler full of like burgers, another cooler full of like drinks. And they had like ice in the drinks and they had like waters. This, you were literally seeing people carrying merch bags. Literally Ryder Cup merch bags. Filled with ice. With nothing in with them. Ice. Filled with That's ice. That's what I did. And covered in drinks. Yeah. No, no. But you went the poor route, shall we say. You had water. Dude, these people had them covered from bottom to top. Full of beer. Yeah. No, no, no. That's, like, what, that's, that's what like a thousand euros that is worth true. of beer. That is true. I know. It's like, so I, I was saying, to, I was talking to Jack, like, I understand people have good jobs. I understand people have money. That's fair enough. But that's so much money for what you get. I mean, if you think, if like you think about beer, it, it costs right? like 14 euros in the, in the like Ryder Cup. It, one beer. If you think it, no, it's like eight euros, eight euros, one beer. Or was like it a eight? can, like a small can Still. of like beer, right? Yeah, but it was it's a can, it's, it's three six. Yeah, it is, right? So like you know, literally in that bag, if somebody fit like 30, 
30 cans, which is easily a cup with alongside ice, right? That's oh, yeah, 240 easy. euros of beer. It's like, and that's the, a ticket. So And there was people, yeah. And there was people with like bags on both hands. Yeah, 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 yeah. There was other people with like coolers that all, we, we, we were seeing people holding uh, boxes of beer, right? Like the actual, like the, the way- Yeah, loads. Um, loads like the, loads. the way beer comes, and like uh, comes to the venue. They were holding boxes and like crates well, of beer. It's part of the experience, right? And, and I'm like, think, hey, look, you it know, is. like- I, I get it, right, I get look, it, I get I, it. And I think, and I've realized this, obviously like this is the first time I've ever attended the Ryder Cup, right? Mm. Ryder Cup is for posh people. Like your average Joe. Yeah. No, I agree. You can't really. You have like, to really you, be into you golf. You would have to be into golf. You would have to oh, have a good amount of savings, you know. But to be fair, you know, yeah. most people who play golf, you know, already relatively well off if they can, like, afford a membership and all that stuff, right? But I'll yeah. tell you what, the Ryder Cup is not, it's not an accessible way of, like, the sport, basically. Yeah. Don't you agree? I agree. Like, I out of, like, agree. the average of 50,000 uh, 50, people that go there every, every day, right? So, like, uh, for the whole week. Yeah. I think about like what five hundred thousand, six hundred thousand, um, actually show up there. Actually, no, sorry, like three hundred fifty yeah. or four hundred thousand people actually show up throughout the whole week, right? No, seven hundred thousand. No way. You're no, yeah. you're joking. Seven hundred thousand people. No, no I, re I read that somewhere. Seven hundred thousand oh people God. turned up. Like crazy. The I tell you what, like you know, if you counted up the net worth of all that seven hundred thousand people, that would that would literally yeah. be the GDP of a small African country. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, it, it, it would be way, way more. <laughs> so here's my argument, Chenji, and you will 100% agree with me on this. With how expensive drinks, tickets, um, merch, food is at the Ryder Cup, why are the players not getting paid? Oh my God, Dude, seriously, <laughs> seriously. It kind of makes sense. Dude, the, I guarantee you, I gar I'm going to Google this. How much money did the 2023 Ryder Cup make? Uh, Mate, here's something here. Here's uh, something for you, right? Dude, oh my God. I got goosebumps. Did you, do you know how much it, that, that they made? I would eyeball it at about 1 billion. Before I tell you, how much money does the Masters make? 500 million. Oh my God. Oh God. Chenji, how are these people not getting paid? I mean, they get paid at the Masters. How are these people not getting paid? Wait, wait, what? Wait, Dude, what? The Masters, this could be big. All right, go the on. The Masters tournament reportedly brought in $141 million in revenue this year. Okay, okay, fair enough. And uh, and the prize pot is like 20 million or something. I think it's like eight, eight, 16, 17, 8 million. Yeah. Plus six. The Ryder uh -oh. Cup uh -oh. made an average of $500 million in revenue this year. How are the players not getting paid? Dude, this is, this is gonna be, this is gonna be the title of our podcast today. How are the Ryder Dude. Cup players not getting paid? Unbelievable. No, that, this is going to be a no, clip. But clip. seriously, like, okay, let's count this one up, right? Like, the average ticket yeah. price for, like, the for any day, any given day, is, like, 200 euros, right? We paid, like, 250 pounds for the Sunday, yeah. right? 700,000 people attended. That's, like, 140 million just in, like, ticket revenues. Tickets. Just in tickets. Plus your merch. Right? Plus your food. Hospitality. Plus everything else. Most overpriced. Oh I actually checked out hospitality, you know. I was like, oh, let's make this like a memory. Yeah, it was, a, it was a lot. It was like. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. Basically, you had to purchase the general admissions ticket first. And then you had to add on top a thousand pound to be in one of those hospitality suites. So basically, for each person for one day, you're paying like thousand two hundred and fifty pounds for some like free food and drinks. Like, that's a lot, isn't it? Plus the merchandise. Like, the, how expensive was like the merch store? Like. I thought we spent a lot of money at the Open, all right, which is already like a flagship event, you know, in like international golf events, right? Um, but now looking back, like, you know, I've, I think I spent like 500 pounds that like, you know, what the year, like last year. Um, and I got so much for my money. Like I got, actually got a lot of stuff back, right? Like I got like, what, a hoodie, I agree. a jacket, yeah. two polos, you yeah. know, a bunch of like, like water bottles, 
like T yeah. mark, bunch of T markers, bunch of divot yeah. tools and everything, right? And I spent 500 pounds. Over here, I spent 500 euros and- For one bag like, of stuff. Not even one bag of stuff, mate. I could literally carry that without, yeah. it, without a bag. It was like- Yeah, it was, it was, it was pretty crazy. It was, it was, it's mad. It's mad how expensive it was. Um, speaking of, of expensive, is this is a great little segue. Team Europe was wearing the most expensive uniforms in sports history. Yes, sir. Chenji, take it away. Because, <laughs> okay, I've got a lot of stats on this. But you, you already knew this. So while we were in, in, in Italy, Chenji says to me, uh, not the, the day after, was it the day after? On the Monday? Yeah, yeah. So on the Monday, Ch Chenji says to me, dude, I need to go to a, to a certain little boutique shop. Um, I want to get um, what they... Uh, he, well, he, how, how did you phrase it? My friend wants a, a Ryder Cup cardigan that, that, that you can only buy at this one specific little shop. And they're doing it as like a limited sale for the Ryder Cup. And I'm like, oh, that's cute. I didn't realize that this little boutique shop was the provider of the Team Europe uniform. And it just so happened that it's one of the most famous, um, I don't know, brands in Italy. Italian cashmere brand. Italian cashmere brand. And they kitted out Team Europe. And not only have the uh, kit kitted out Team Europe this year. Dude, this is not the first year. They started in, tw in, in, in 2016. In yeah. And they will be doing it again for 2025. Mm -hmm. And now the question is, how much... It, is the stuff if you want to buy it first of all do you want to know on the sunday do you want to know wait wait okay, wait, okay, wait, okay, wait wait okay, before okay. you get before you get to that before you because i i also have the, the the numbers before you get on the sunday on the first tee we see the first group come out i think it was john ram and Scotty 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 Scheffler, yeah. dude i see keep in mind friday and saturday i see the team uniform and i'm like yeah it's good it's okay it's, I, would, I don't know if i would wear it but it's it looks nice on them but i don't know if i want to buy that that team that uniform right Sunday, dude, that blue and Lovely. yellow little polo Lovely. that they were wearing was incredible. Absolutely. The yeah. first thing I said to Jack when they, uh, John Ram came out is like, the first thing we're doing after we watch these groups tee off, we're going we're gonna to go to the merch tent and I am splashing out and I'm buying Team Europe Sunday polo. And he's like, oh yeah, great idea. I love that. Let's do that. We finish. We go to the merch tent. I'm looking far and near, up and down. Excuse me. Uh, I'm looking for the for for the for the team the Europe uniform that they were wearing today. They were like, no, we we don't sell that. I'm like, how do you not sell that? So then we start making conspiracy theories in in our minds, like, oh, the reason why they're not selling that is because they don't want every all the spectators to be wearing the same uniform as the players. This is so silly. By no, the no, way. but it makes sense. And they don't because otherwise, it yeah, make because sense. otherwise, yeah. But yeah. again, if you think about it, fo footballers wear, let's say, Arsenal or Spurs, they wear the the home kit. And everybody in that stadium wears that same well, yeah, kit. Yeah, because he can't get so on the what, pitch. What is that like problem? Every, everybody there can get onto the pitch in the golf course. Yes, it, okay. It yeah, can make sense. it very confusing. But yes, yeah, actually, go on. Go on. You go can, on. right. So we're like, yeah, okay. So then Sunday finishes off. We're like, oh, we didn't get the uniform. So then from Monday morning, I'm checking the Ryder Cup website twice a day to check if they've released the team uniform. Nothing. I f like five days go by and I'm like... I'm like, and then I figure it out, light bulb moment. And I text Chenji and Chenji's like, yes, mate, I know this. This is the shop that we wanted to go to. Oh, that we went to and they were all out of stock. The brand is called Loro Piana. They kitted out Team Europe with $30,000 worth of uniform. Chenji, how much was one polo if you wanted to buy it? Well, first of all, you can't buy, you actually can't physically buy the Sunday colours, right? They made a very, very limited selection available to purchase, right? Which by the time I got there on a Monday morning was all gone, right? A t-shirt, yeah. right? Like, sorry, a polo. Just have a guess how much. Did I tell you how much it is? I, I, I know how much. I've got these frigates okay, to me. Pretend, tell us. pretend you don't know. Okay, fine, you don't know. Uh, I'm going to guess, right, okay. I'm going to guess a maximum... 120 pounds that way that that would make sense right like you have to, uh, team europe you, yeah with go on maybe foot joy maybe i don't know uh, like a local brand 
maybe like a Europe, like this. This is not Footjoy, this pullover that I'm wearing, right? It's like a, a Ryder Cup brand, or shall we say. £120 for a t-shirt. Makes sense, right? No. 10 times that and, and then add another two tickets on top. How much is that? 1,700 euros. For what? For a polo shirt. Mm, I don't think it was. Yeah, dude. yeah. 810 pounds? No, 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 no. Are you joking? Nah. Like it's, they've got, they've got different selections, right? Like the cheapest thing probably started at like 800 pounds, 800 euros. But the ones that I saw there that were still available, like a shirt, like a t short sleeve, was like a thousand seven hundred pounds. Yeah. Wait, 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 the, wait. So this T-shirt was it like a Ryder Cup T-shirt yeah, yeah, yeah. or just a normal yeah, yeah, Ryder Cup T-shirt? Like Ryder Cup. What, it's was made it of like cashmere a though? It's like it's not like made of cotton. I think the polo shirt is made of cotton, right? Um. Hold on, hold on. So is this like a Friday T-shirt or Saturday T-shirt or was it just a, a specific? No, just a Ryder Cup. Just a Ryder Cup branded. Um, that is crazy. Yeah. And how much was it? Thousand seven hundred euros. For like oh a short God, sleeve, dude. and then they had a little waterproof—not a little waterproof, just like a, it looks like a tracksuit, even like it's one of those quarter zips, right? And I, like a gilet, like a, not like a gilet, but like a quarter zip, right? Long sleeve, and um, right. Oh, I yeah. don't even think this was cashmere. Okay, two thousand three hundred pounds, uh, euros. Sorry, and then they had this cashmere quarter zip, right? Like way over three thousand pounds uh, euros. That is absolutely mental, and the best bit is. That you could only buy the, the, the this merch from that one little shop in Rome, and they were only sending it for that one for the that week of the Ryder yep, Cup. That's right. By the time Chenji went on Monday, everything was pretty much yeah, sold out. They, they had, had a couple they had of like pieces left. a couple of pieces, and either like double extra large or extra yeah. small, like nothing in my size. Yeah. I tell you what though, if they had that polo shirt available, yeah, in those colors, right? If it if it was selling for a thousand and seven hundred euros, yeah. I don't know about you, Theo. I'm gonna ask you that no, question. No, you stop. No, just, no, no. I would have bought it. No, no, you wouldn't. No, you wouldn't. You you can't do that. So you for for that that Sunday tea you would have paid one thousand seven hundred pounds for. I would have. Silly per that is the epitome of silly purchase of the week. Dude, you're, it's a t-shirt. You okay, you're only going to wear that when you're playing golf. I hope No, no, to I'm, God, that's I'm the never going to wear that. I'm going to wear that to some special event when I get married. I'm going to I'm going to wear that when I get married. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you're going to wear that that one sp one time when you play golf, right? Everyone's going to look at you and they're going to be like what a prick. <laughs> <coughs> That's the first thing. Second thing, there is no way that you're going to play golf in that t-shirt, in that polo, whatever you want to call it, and that you're not going to wash it. You're going to wash it. Uh, How many washes does it have in it do, before it kind of... Did you know that you cannot, oh you my cannot God. wash these shirts? You have to hand wash. Dude, you have you're to playing hand golf in You it. have to hand wash them. Okay. Even if you hand wash it, it's still going to lose that f that brand new feeling. And it's going to lose the novelty of what it is. Do you want to know what brand this t-shirt is? Is it is it Laura Piana? <laughs> How much did you pay for that? <laughs> no comment. <laughs> oh, Chenji, man. All I will say is it's hand Chenji. wash only. <laughs> oh, my God, dude. Wow. Well, you know, fair play to you. Listen, if you can afford it, fair I cannot play. afford it. Ghost. I'm just kidding. Dude, <laughs> this is clearly... This is clearly not a Laura Piana, mate. This is a bloody Lululemon, mate. I'm, from the from the, know, the from the from the Lululemon from the from cheap. the outlet for like twenty pounds. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'm, I'm I'm speaking in like general terms, right? If you if if you've got that kind of money and you want to splash out, by all means, spend your money, buy whatever you want to buy, wear what you want to wear, eat what you want to eat. That's like that's fair play, and that's like everybody's dream in a way. But. It's just things were so overpriced, and the and the, the the best bit is, no matter how much you put you you, you price it up, people will there's always that one person, ten people that would go out and actually spend the money and buy it because they want to be that person. that's like, oh yeah, I I own that. Uh, but the fair play, if you can afford it, fair play. But it's just 
right now Look, in my economic status, it, it seems like a bit but silly. Dude, but if I want the Euro million tomorrow, mate, the first thing I'm doing is, you know, I don't know, splashing out and buying things that I don't need, but, right? That's but what Theo, think about it, right? Somebody, somebody like at the Ryder Cup, not just somebody, like a lot of people have paid over £1,500 a day for the hospitality experience, okay? If they're willing to pay £1,500 yeah. as an additional to the ticket, right, they can pay a thousand pounds for a t-shirt don't they i agree but you, you you just said it there and you didn't even realize you're paying 1500 pounds for an experience you might not be the greatest experience you might but it might be it's something extra right paying 1500 pounds or whatever it costs for that one t-shirt that you're going to wear that one time when you play that one golf competition it seems a little bit excessive but again that's just points of view of right if you um if okay if you are a member at st andrews for example in scotland or i don't know like a really rich prestigious golf course you're not gonna like the the you're surrounded by, by millionaires you're a millionaire yourself you're loaded you have the best of everything you just turned up in a i don't know ferrari i don't know how it works <laughs> I'm, I'm not rich but you know you know what i mean right so that those kind of people they would want to turn up in that in the on the Saturday comp wearing that Laura Piana Ryder Cup Sunday T-shirt, right? And it's you know, it's and, a the best, conversation and the best piece. part of Laura Piana, you would never know it's Laura Piana. Mm. I, you know what? I do enjoy. I do like that. I like minimal kind of stuff where you, you can't really see the logo. Exactly. I don't want the logo to be in your face too much. I, I'm 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 all, I'm all about that. But I was looking at like a normal T-shirt, dude. It's got it's got Laura quiet luxury, Pia mate. It's got quiet luxury. I, li I like that. I'm not going to lie. Laura Piana. Let's have a look. Well, the t-shirt is like 350 euros for like a normal cotton one. And like they've got cashmere ones going well over a grand. Let's have a look. We should go to the store next time. Just have a look. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I, don't, I don't belong there. They're, they're probably looking me up and down going, no, 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 no. Pr pretty woman. Or we can pretty woman I will them. say, because obviously I went to that Laura Piana store in Rome, right? And um, they have a nice glass of water. I wanted to ask where the champagne was. Um, I was like, let them pamper me and then I'm going to get out of here. <laughs> you almost stole a golf ball, no? Tell us that. Oh, oh, dude, dude. Like, oh man. Like, basically, right, because it was like the Ryder Cup special only for that week, they were like basically outfitted in like golf gear. So oh, next to all of the Ryder Cup garments, right, of which I asked actually like, you know, what are the sizes, what are the sizes? There was literally nothing remotely resembling like, you know, my size or my friends' size. Um, but right next to them, there were these like Laura Piana balls, like they were Pro V one, okay, mm -hmm. with Laura Piana branded branding on them. And I'm just like, yeah. damn, imagine. But they weren't for sale, no. no and then it's actually, I asked them, is there any chance I can buy one of these balls? Like any chance? Like just name the price, and I'll, I want to like buy it. And the lady with the most nonchalant look in her face says, oh. Scusi, not for sale. Scusi, <laughs> not today. Not, yeah. the, not the for sale. <laughs> and That's then, pretty decent Italian accent. Like, <laughs> and then, you know, just I go home. Was, and she, was she a grandma? No, no, no. Was she, she was, 85 no, she was years quite, old, was, cooking was, pasta in the no, corner? She was quite young. Um, okay. And then I go home and just like, all right, I really want that ball. It's kind of posh. You know, it's like, dude, imagine yeah. having like a Laura Piana brand ball. To, so to I, be fair, that's a great souvenir. Yeah, I know, right? I know. And um, yeah. obviously like being a sponsor of the Ryder Cup as well. Um, and so I, I, I go online and just literally Google, you know, Laura Piana Titleist Pro V1, right? Like a bunch of promo materials show up of like Laura Piana being a sponsor. And then I found this obscure forum many, many years ago. Yeah. From a few years ago. Like talking about how do I find this ball, Laura Piana branded ball, and uh, there's some guy that said I found them for sale at some like auction, and three like a sleeve of those balls, three balls from like the 2016 or 2018 Ryder Cup, yeah, was twelve thousand pounds was going for like two thousand um, dollars wow. dollars back then. Three balls, like so it was like a forum about obscure balls, like you know collectors items, yeah, collectors yeah, 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 items. Yeah. And someone was looking yeah. for them and somebody else said, yeah, I once saw them at an auction and they went for like $2,000. That's crazy. I'm just, on, I'm just on the website now, Laura Piana, right? A normal cashmere t-shirt, box standard cashmere. Okay, obviously it's cashmere. 990 pounds. 
Uh, another the gift of kings apparently t-shirt is virgin wool. I th by the way, I don't know what any of this means. You you, you know better than me. I no idea. Dude. Virgin wool, made in Italy, exclusive t-shirt crafted from the gift of kings. Wool Laura Piana's unique selection of the finest wool in the world, only twelve microns in diameter. No idea what that means, right? One thousand six hundred and sixty-five t-shirt. One thousand six hundred and sixty-five. Pounds for one T-shirt. Wait, so wait for that for that, how you for that see, price. It better not stay virgin after I buy it. <laughs> so you see all these rich people, yeah, like Steve Jobs, uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and Elon Musk, right? They're famous. They're famous for like wearing like a very bland wardrobe. I mean, if I was them, and all I wore was the same T-shirt every single day, it's not going to be a Primark H&M T-shirt, is it? It's going to be one of these bad boys, mate. Yes, sir. I want to feel a bit of luxury when I wake up in the morning. Yes, sir. I want to feel a bit of virgin. The... Yeah, I, I, want, I, I want that virgin wool I, feeling on my I body, I want to de-version some wool t-shirt every <laughs> single day, mate. You need to stop that. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Because <laughs> it's changed. You just took it somewhere completely different. Right. Uh, last topic that we have for today's episode. Really? Dude, that was quick. Dude, time flies when you have fun. We're, we're already like 45 minutes in. Do you know... The membership cost that Marco Simeone. I can imagine it's not that expensive, but I can also imagine that after the Ryder Cup is going to be very expensive. So, but I know I'm actually locked up for like a weekend oh. round. It's like ninety euros. It's like like a weekday round. It's, so it's like ninety euros or something, right? Yeah, it is. But, it is. But it go is. on. What's the membership? I'm guessing say three thousand euros per year. <sighs> very good. And your membership is. 3,500 euros joining for an individual me membership fee? that gives you access on. to all club services. Yeah. Um, there's one, the most expensive membership. Weekday membership is 2,625. Uh, if you're an individual membership that gives you access to all the club's services for those who have never been members. So if you have never been a member of a golf course, which I'm not sure how they're going to find out if you have or not, it's only two thousand two hundred pounds, which is actually decent. Mm -hmm. No, yeah. like that's Kenilston's more like, expensive like than that. Like euros or pounds? Euros. Euros. Yeah. So, so it's, it's even so like two thousand like pounds. pounds. It's like nothing. That's not bad. It's right? cheaper than Kenilston. So. And I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. I hope you know the answer to this. I am sure that Marco uh, Simone Golf Course is a two champ two eighteen hole championship course. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure. And if I'm not mistaken, I could be completely wrong. I think that they got, out of the two courses, they build an 18-hole Ryder Cup course out of the two courses. But I'm not I'm not 100% sure. But that, I don't know why I know this. I don't know if I've read that somewhere. But it could be true. But again, I, I, it could be wrong. I, I don't know. I don't know. Poss but yeah, I, I was just... I don't know. But to be to um, be fair, most Ryder Cup venues aren't that expensive, you know. Like, I literally Celtic Manor. Celtic Manor is like three thousand something pounds per year. I don't know if the um, prices are going to be online. You have one of those things. No, seriously, like Celtic Manor is like three thousand something pounds a year, right? I'm, I'm the Belfry, yeah. do you you know a member there, don't you? You can ask him how much the Belfry uh, the Belfry is. I think the Belfry is quite expensive, considering like that around a, a golf at the Brabazon costs like costs like hundred and eighty pounds. No, but it doesn't pounds. matter how much it costs off the rack. Like it, it matters. Like Walton Heath, right? Costs like what three hundred pounds for a round to play there, but a membership costs three thousand pounds a year. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair so, enough. Fair enough. I actually have one, I actually have one more topic, and I, I'm this is actually a good one. Um. We don't know, because we spoke about this a little bit before. We don't know the answer to this, but I would love to know the answer to this, right? So when you're watching golf, especially at the Ryder Cup, and they're playing in like a foursome, so two pairs, alternative shots, right? What ball do they actually use? Because I have some um, things up here, right? Let's take the Friday tea time, John Rahm and Tyrrell Hatton, yeah? John Rahm Callaway. is sponsored by Callaway. Chrome Soft. Right? Tyrrell Hatton is... Tyrrell Hatton, actually. Ping. That's right. Actually, 
No, Ping. He doesn't put his balls though. So what did he? What did he? I think he uses a Pro V One X. He does. So Tiro Hatton is a Ping player, yeah. and he's using a Pro V One X, right? So John Rahm at, is teamed up with Tiro Hatton. What ball are they using? So Callaway or Pro V One? I think they use. I mean, they, they get to the side, right? Like so. So do, first question is: Do the brands care? Do they um, say to John Rahm, no, you can't use a, um, a different ball apart from Callaway? Same with Tyrrell Hatton. Or is it the case of, okay, because when, whenever Tyrrell Hatton tees off first, he's using Pro V1X. And then next hole, when uh, John Rahm tees can't do off. That. You can't do that. Like, you have to select one ball for your, for your team. What? Mm -hmm. Are you sure? I'm 100% sure. Like, they use the same ball. Dude, like, how would that realistically be possible? It would not be possible. It doesn't really ma matter anyway, right? Like, it's alternate It's alternate shots for the foursome matches. Yeah, but... Uh, for the four ball... No, uh, I, for the four uh, balls, you can use your own branded balls. But for the foursome ones... Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, course. but for the foursomes, yeah. right? Like, John Rahm and Till Hatton, right? Like, you can't just, like, tee off with the Chrome, Chrome Soft or Chrome Soft X. And then with the second shot, Till just, like, places them in the ball. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm trying to say. Maybe on the second hole, when Tyrrell then drives. On the second, no chance. yeah. That's yeah. illegal. That's illegal. Really, dude? You have to use the same ball for the whole round. That's literally like a rule in the, you know, rule of rule of golf. No, I... I... Even for us? Yeah. Nah. 100%. I mean, if I lose if I lose the ball and I have no Kirkland's left, I'm not going to be like, all right, guys, see you later. I'm going home. Uh, if I'm you are in a proper tournament condition, competition con conditions, that's right. You literally, you will be disqualified for using a different ball. Even like somebody, there was actually okay. controversy. Like, I feel like it's like maybe a year ago, a couple of months ago, where a pro accidentally yeah. played. He basically thought all he had in the bag was like Pro V1s, right? But he turned out to have like one Pro V1X from some other playing partner or something. And then because he lost the ball, he grabbed that ball and he played that for the rest of the round. And then he panicked so hard that he went, he voluntarily like, you know, went to the referee and said, I'm really sorry. I've been using the wrong ball for like a couple of like holes. And they disqualified him. I think if you claim what ball you're using on, on the, before you hit it, before no, like, no, on no, the no, tee, no, you're no, okay. hundred percent not. hundred percent not. Okay, so in that case, then what ball are they using? A Callaway so, or a Pro V1? So this is the so this is the fun this is the fun thing, right? Actually, I brought up. Did you do you remember? I sent I sent you that screenshot. Yeah, I've I've got it in front of me. Yeah. So I I was thinking, and actually I did some digging on this too. So it's great that you brought it up, right? Like, actually, okay. I feel like one of the reasons why the European team did so well is that they paired players up who play with the same models of balls. I had a look at that as well, and yes, you're correct, but. For example, John Rahm and Tyrrell Hatton, they weren't using the same ball. Yeah. Shane Lowry, Sepp, Sepp, Sepp Stracker were both using Strix and Z-Stars. Uh, Tommy, Fleet, uh, Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy Fleetwood. Tommy uh, Tommy Fleetwood and Rory McIlroy were using TaylorMade. TaylorMade, TP, again, TP5X, the both same exact one. Yeah. Whereas... Yeah, sorry, you're yeah, right. Whereas yeah. if you look at the American team, right? All the pairings. Like, give, me, uh, give me the pairings for, the, for day one, US. Uh, Scotty Scheffler, Sam Burns. Right. Scotty Scheffler Scotty uses Scheffler. a Tyler's Pro V1. Sam Burns uses a oh. Callaway Chrome Soft X. Max Homer, Brian Harmon. I, Max, think, they're, I think they're both Titleist. Um, Max Homer plays with a Tyler's Pro V1 and Harmon plays with Pro mm. V1, yes. So they're fine. That's okay. why they That's why they did uh, quite like, decent. Mm, yeah, actually. Ricky Fowler, Colin Morikawa. Morikawa plays with a Taylor Fowler. made TP5. And then Morikawa. Morikawa. Um, oh, TP5. Oh, wow. And then Fowler places yeah, with a TP5X. Yeah. Different. They're very yeah. different. I mean, one is, Show one's very spinny. One's not spinny at all. Yeah. Xander and Patrick Cantley. Um, Xander, Xander Shoffley plays with a Callaway Chrome Soft X. And then Cantley plays, uh, plays with a Pro V1X. Mm, interesting. Day two? That, that is quite interesting. Day two, I don't have it in front yeah. of me. Yeah, and then actually I did some more digging in as well. So, right. basically, Phil Mickelson, yeah, and Tiger Woods mm -hmm. in the 2004 Oakland Hills Ryder Cup was like the worst sort of pairing in history, basically. Like, Tiger was never good at Ryder Cups, right? Tiger was obviously like a brilliant, okay. brilliant like individual player, still is. Yeah, 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 yeah. But he was never a good Ryder Cup 
play like play play me. And in two thousand and four, um, the captain, um, I forgot who it was, got paired by, uh, paired with Mickelson, right? So Tiger at the time played a Nike ball. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and um, Mickelson, right? He played with a what did he play with let's have a look really quick um he played like a he played like a little callaway ball yeah mm-hmm. and can, just give me one second i need to get this right yeah <coughs> no sorry this wasn't like the this wasn't tiger and um nicholson this was actually um one second yeah i should have prepared this actually but basically right um, it was like a last minute pairing. Like he didn't even know that he was getting paired up. So he didn't have like weeks to prepare, right? He had like two hours right. before his foursomes match to prepare for like a completely different ball that he was never used to. And then it went all over the place, all over the place. And they obviously lost the match. Wait, so was Tiger Woods the guy that, that didn't use the Nike ball and use the other no, no, ball? No, no, no. Like, let me just double check. There was like this, there was something, there was something. Um, Tiger Woods Ryder Cup ball control. Here we go. I've got it. 2004. Tiger Woods accepts share of blames as USA Ryder Cup fight back falls flat. Uh, as a boozy, as a boozy. Or uh, to the golf again. It was was this in in, in uh, France? Uh, Woods, the greatest player who ever lived, but the Ryder Cup remains his kryptonite. Has he never won a Ryder Cup? His competition CV now stands out at one thirteen, lost twenty one with three ties. Only last week, but I'm frustrated because I just didn't perform at the level I had been playing. He said I got behind early in the matches. Uh, is, he, is he blaming the ball? How yeah, look, I've, I've, I've got it now. Okay. Oh, was it Furyk? Um, here we go. It was 2004, actually. Wow. Uh, basically, yeah, it was a Hazel Tyne. And um, they got paired up together. So this wasn't like the 2014. Um so the real problem was the afternoon match when they were asked to play alternate shot against Darren Clark and Lee Westwood. Yeah. Um, yeah. And basically, they only found out like pretty late on that they were going to be paired together. Yeah. Okay. So it basically took and Tiger Woods being Tiger being Tiger. And uh, he said like the year before during the President's Cup, um, Tiger said, right, like, you know, the ball that Mickelson uses was just not going to work for him because Tiger plays a very high spin ball and the Mickelson plays yep. with a very low spin ball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And they had to, you know, like within two days come up with like a solution. Um, Mickelson grabbed a couple of his balls, like Tiger's balls, went out to the side and tried to learn his golf ball in about four or five hour sessions. Yeah. And uh, literally, you know, just spent, you know, four or five hours on hitting balls and then dialing in the balls. Instead of like, you know, yeah. hitting wedges, hitting putts, practicing putts, reading greens and doing like, you know, other stuff, right? So he was spending all of his time just literally getting used to like a ball. Um, and he says, you know, like that's verbatim, Mick, Phil Mickelson, in the history of my career, I have never ball tested two days prior to a major. I've never done it. It doesn't allow me to play at my best. What allows me to play my best is to learn the course, sharpen my touch on the greens sharpen my chipping out of the rough and ball striking and so forth. Instead, I'm taking four or five hours and I'm out trying to learn another ball to allow us to play our best. Had we known a month in advance, we might have been able to make it work. I think we probably would have made it work, but we didn't know until two days prior. That's crazy. And it's like, what ball are you, are you, do you want... To go from a no spinning board to a really spinning board, or a really sp- or go from a really spinning board to a well, no spinning board. It's just well, one of Tiger those things. Well, Tiger said, like he just can't play with a low spinning ball. There was no chance he would Mad. was going to do that. So Mickelson had to like take one for the team, right? And Mickel- okay. I mean, and to be fair, that that surprises me a little bit. I'm not going to lie. And that was literally right the worst U.S. Ryder Cup defeat at the time. 
right? Losing yeah. nine and a half points um, um, to the US team to 18 and a half points with the Amer- uh, for the uh, European team. Wow. Yeah. Mickelson won that, one that. match and lost three. And Tiger Woods won two matches and lost three. Wow. Very, very cool. I can definitely see... 2000, uh, Tiger 2004, Woods 2004, Ryder Cup. Hazel Tai National. Yeah. I, I can definitely see uh, Tiger Woods being like a future t- uh, Ryder Cup captain, obviously. But again, it's like you said, his Ryder Cup um, uh, stats are not very good. So is it almost like, do you want him to be a captain? It'd be great for the team, morale and all that kind of stuff. But maybe he's not the kind of guy that you just want. I don't know. It's a, it's a weird one because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, on that on that note, thank you guys for listening. That, that was actually like a quite a full episode all about Ryder Cup, right? That was a decent episode. Yeah, dude. We, um, I'll tell you what, you we can listening. talk about the Ryder Cup for days, can't we? Yeah, we can. But we kind of have to limit ourselves because the Ryder, the Ryder Cup has finished. So, you know, we kind of focus on, on everything else. Uh, we have... Dude, uh, I'm, I'm going I'm, I'm to I'm gonna, I'm gonna end up saying with, for the Ryder Cup, right? Like, if we ever make it to America for like the Ryder Cup or maybe the Masters or whatever, like US tournament, you think we're gonna we're complaining for Ryder Cup in Rome like prices there? We're gonna be like, yeah. What the hell is this? The reason why I was so surprised <laughs> because of how cheap everything else was outside of of the Ryder Cup venue and how expensive it was at, at the Ryder Cup venue. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In America, everything is already quite a little bit expensive. Yeah, like, because I, I'm you know, expecting food like to 30, be overpriced. Thirty percent of people who came to the Ryder Cup in Rome were like Americans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mad. But um, I don't know about you, Chenji, but I will definitely be at Beth Page in 2025. I'd love to, man. Uh, I, ha- I have family that live like 45 minutes away. Dude, so Most of my friends live in New York, so brilliant. Like, we're sorted. There you go. It works. It's, it's, it's going to work out. And yeah, I, I, it's, I, I, I can't think wait. it's going to happen. It's going to be good. Theo. I actually think it's going to happen. I, I, I also... But what, dude, quick question. In, in like 20 years' time, we're going to be one of those people in the front that knows everything about ins and outs about the Ryder Cup. Yeah, we're, we're, we're going to be the guardians of the cup in 20 years' time. We're going to be the leaders. <laughs> What do you mean 20 years? Quick question. Years. Quick question. Quick go question. But before we go, before we go, if I go. One one word answer. Where did you have uh what's how how can I phrase this? Ryder Cup or St. Andrews. Ryder Cup, ten out of ten. The atmosphere doesn't beat. Like you can't beat Ryder Cup in terms of atmosphere. If I was a if I was a player, I would say St Andrews. If I was a spectator, Ryder Cup every single time. I agree, but I think I had not more fun, but it almost meant more to me at St Andrews, just because of the actual place itself. Okay, do, 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 I get do it. You know what I, I mean? get it. Do, no, do, because to be fair, do you get what I'm trying to like, say? Obviously, first T vibes was incredible, and like the the mate Ryder Cup was so well organized. Like you walk into like the entrance to go anywhere. As soon as you go in, on your left hand side it was a driving range. On the right hand side it was a putting green and chipping area. Uh, the first thing you see was um, the, the merch tent, massive tented village. They were, had TVs everywhere you look, massive TVs. They had bean bags where you can like sit down and chill. They had benches. It was so 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 well organized. Everything you needed was was right next to you, right? But there's something in the air about St. Andrews that's just a little bit different. I agree. I do agree. I think if you can, the, the place equally, like in my heart, right? And But with different feelings. <laughs> like Ryder yeah, Cup, it it's is. like it's a feeling of excitement, of competition, atmosphere. of atmosphere, yeah. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, just that. You know, people coming fierce, together, fierceness, um, yeah, a fiery yeah. feeling. St Andrews for me, it's been just like that tradition, right? Um, you know, like emotional. Um, it was, yeah, his- history, yeah, and yeah. sort of like just deep. Im- You're deep right. Thoughts is the both number one for completely different reasons. Like, yeah, I mean, I would, sh- I've yeah. shed, I shed tears for both after both, mm. but f- for different reasons. I agree. Okay, well put. On that note, guys, thank you very much for listening. Please like and subscribe. Um, follow follow along on uh, Instagram and TikTok at Russell Slice Podcast. And we will see you again this time next week. Take care. Bye.